you ever wake up in the middle of the night having nightmares about being stuck inside your Honda Element and not being able to get out? Well, if you have, you probably ought to see some uh, professional help for that. But in the meantime, I've got an idea for you. Check this out. This book is worth the money you're going to have to pay for it, and it's not cheap. But it keeps me from having to guess at things like what's holding my panels on. You basically got to pull your little handhold out that goes in here, and there's one of those uh, Honda push pin things that goes in here, and the rest of this are those plastic clips that just hold pretty much all Hondas together. You just pop it, pop it loose. Now that this is off, we can kind of ponder how all this goes together. So we can see that when we work that to get out, we're working that. So we have to come up with a way to pull this. And that's where this comes in. This is a little kit you can get off eBay. These are dirt cheap, dirt cheap. And all we're gonna have to do is wire this up so that when we hit a button, it's gonna energize this and it's gonna pull. So we're gonna mount this thing over here. All right, making a little progress here. Let me show you what I got going on. <clears throat> this is just a coat hanger, right? And uh, bent this piece of coat hanger around, put it in the top of that piece. And then this is something that's supplied with the kit. This is a little coupler that allows you to attach the pull rod to whatever happens to be in your door. I'm not gonna try to mount the pull rod straight through this because I think it helps if you have a little wiggle room, otherwise it's gonna bind because it's it's not exactly a straight pull. And uh, I popped out the clip for the wiring harness just to temporarily mount this thing using that screw and that screw hole. Um, and the kit, you can see it's got these little holes you can mount it with. It comes with the screws to go in it couple other little odds and ends. So the next trick is to find power, which I think we're gonna get off of this light, which has always got power to it. So step one is to remove the actual lens to the light. Hey! Uh, we got uh, about 12 volts. So that should be enough. Let's run a wire and see what we got. There is a polarity on these. So if you hook it up backwards, well, it'll be trying to push instead of pull. And we don't want that. Well, I think the next thing to do is uh, pull this panel off, start snaking wire. There are a couple of screws in here. So this just pulls out. Here's the wiring harness for the light. Got a little tab on the side you gotta push in. Pops right off. It's only got one on one side. I'm gonna show you how to snake wire. Got this piece loose, got this piece off. We don't have to take this entire piece off because we're just gonna snake wire through it. Now, this is the rest of that coat hanger I showed you from earlier. Took these needle nose pliers and bent a little hook into it. This is what we're gonna call a wire snake. Any of you guys that have done electrical work, you've seen this before. It's not gonna be too tricky either. <clears throat> we only need to snake one wire uh, because the other wire is gonna be a ground and we're gonna ground it to the back of the wiper motor. Uh, works well enough for the wiper It'll work well enough for what we're doing. And the wire that we're gonna be pulling is this white wire. So we're gonna tap into that. We're gonna pull it through this frame and uh, through this piece right here. Now, this just pulls out, okay? See all those wires? That's everything that's going into the hatch. It's the wiper motor, the sensor to tell you the tailgate's open, the little light, I think, for the license plate maybe. All that runs through here. So we're going to take the snake that we made and we're going to snake one wire extra through there. 
Of course, you knew you were not going to get out of this one without grabbing your 10 millimeter. Let's pop this little. Good grief. <laughs> I'm always amazed at what comes out of my Honda Element. <sighs> now, with that out of the way, <clears throat> we can get to the other side of this boot. This is a rubber boot. See that wire in there? Same wire there, right? My favorite tool again. Hey, I see it. There's our snake. Now we're tying on, here's how I'm tying on the, uh, the wire to the snake. Put a little loop in it, hook it onto the loop of the snake, and we're gonna pull it back through back through that hole very easily. We don't want to snag any of our old wiring and rip that out or we'll create a bigger problem. So we're gonna gently and persistently run this wire back through the door. By pulling on the, uh, the coat hanger here. Now at any point, if it snags, we have to go coax it on through. not as tricky as some people make it seem, but you do have to be careful. There's the end of the wire, there's the other end of the wire, so we're snaked through this first section. Then we work the snake through the boot. Be very careful not to poke holes in the boot. That would be lame and you would suck if you did that. The easiest way to get that to go is to take this uh, very curved boot and bend it as in straight a line as you can. There's my hook coming out. So now we're gonna do the same thing we just did to the last piece to this piece. This one is much tighter than the last one. So our, our, our tie has to be pretty secure. See if I can get a little bit better camera angle, show you how I'm doing this. See, I'll leave that little bit out, bend that around and just twist it around. You know, like a sandwich tie. Do they use sandwich ties anymore? I don't think they use sandwich ties anymore. That's pretty secure. Now I'm gonna very carefully very carefully work this back through there to not snag anything if you're a real wire pull guy you can actually make lube for this i don't mean to get graphic with you if they do make it we're just gonna have to persistently push this through kind of work it work it work it a little bit at a time snags keep going there we go so now we got that snake through Pull the rest of our slack into there. I'm not going to go super tight with it, but I don't want it loose to where it's going to kink up in here. Then that just kind of pops back in there. You just wiggle it and it'll, it'll seat itself, kind of. Left. Oop, right out the hole. the snake work the snake there's our last little run of wire that is going to allow us now now we are in the hole that we want to be in that's what she said put the end of the boot back in you just kind of work that around right just like the other end just wiggle it around till it seats itself and it'll It'll pop in there. It doesn't seem like it will, but it will. <clears throat> Remember I said earlier, it's a, the center plug on this is the one we're going after, the white wire. That's the one that has the power on it. Remember, we checked with our meter. So I'm pulling that back a little bit. 
stripping that back. I'm gonna cut this here and I'm gonna put a wire nut on it, attaching our wire to it. I can hear some of y'all having a fit right now. Wire nuts, holy moly. I know, it's crazy, isn't it? But it's gonna work. Funny thing is, I really don't use this light in the back. I keep it turned off because I drive around a lot uh, and hang out a lot with the tailgate open and I don't really want the light on all the time. Right. Water strippers. Um, it's a talent that I developed over a bazillion years of never having wire strippers. I use diagonal cutters. And here we go. I will be coming back later and soldering all of this, by the way. I just, when I'm testing out an idea, I'd like to kind of go with what's quick and easy. And then if it works, I can come back later, fix it up the way I like it. Now let's snake all this crap back through the hole and get ready to put our light back together. Yay. Right, got our panel back on. All this weird stuff still works. That's a Wonky. Make sure this weather seal isn't trapped under the edge of that plastic like it is right there. Otherwise, it won't seal the weather. Got the screws that hold the light in. Hey. There's another screw. And lens cap. To go ahead and put a crimp on this one remember never use the right tool if you want to impress people always use the wrong tool for the job all right there's our ground wire all crimped it so i bought this switch on ebay and i wanted to make sure i had one that had the uh, factory plug on it we're going to check using the old meter there for continuity figure out which one of these wires we want to attach to for our switch We'll go with a red wire first to the black wire. We push the button. That's not it. We're not getting any continuity. Let's go to the, uh, I guess that's a purple wire to the yellow wire. Yeah, that's it. So that's all we're gonna want to activate this. Now the last thing to figure out here is where our switch is gonna go. Down here's a nice spot. But I got thinking if there's a bunch of junk rolling around in the back of the element, which there usually is in mine, it rolls back here and hits that, patch gonna pop open. What I finally came up with is, we're gonna put it right here in this flat spot on top of this pillar. There's enough room behind here for it to fit and it'll be up kinda out of the way and uh, it ought to work a lot better than most of the other places I've considered. As you can see, there's quite a bit of room behind there for this piece to actually fit. As with most of my best ideas, it all begins with a Sharpie. I'll loosely mark the dimensions of this on there. The drill. Play connect the dots. This is not how you play. I've got a hundred different tools that'll probably do this better. Once those are kind of hogged through. Again, if you really want to impress people, always use the wrong tool for the job. Go to the back and snap these little ribs out. There's little ribs back here. Which 
is making me hungry. Once those are gone, it gets a lot easier to do this job. Woo! Nowhere near ready. Once I've got the whole rough cut, clean everything up with this, and I'll probably finish up with some kind of file. It's a really good way to cut the hell out of yourself. This is what I'm trying to say is be careful. That's what I'm saying. See there? Because if you were to kill yourself <clears throat> doing this mod, my lawyer has told me I am not liable. See, it's getting there. We just keep going. Somebody that knows what they're doing would have made a template of this. Safety first, at the very least second, third tops, at the very least third. That's what I wanted that to look like. If you work on Hondas a lot and you don't have one of these, go get you one. I'm, a, I'm all for the cheap tools, but this particular tool, when it comes to unhooking all these hookups, man, it's the thing to have. It really is. Like I said, <clears throat> don't do this uh, Dykes thing. If you don't have the skill, because you'll cut these little wires off and then you'll be mad at me for showing you a technique that you couldn't do. I've had people ask me all over the place, how do you do that? And I'm like, eh, I don't know. Again, we're gonna go with some uh, wire nuts for now, but this connection definitely needs to be soldered. This is the ground wire. It's gonna go to the blue wire on this particular actuator. Uh, I assume if you're buying this on my recommendation, the cheese ball one off of eBay, you might end up with the same one. So blue is the way we wanna go with that, All right? Yes, right. Okay, so this green wire is going to be hooked <clears throat> to one side of this plug. And our hot wire that we ran from the uh, light inside the car is going to hook right here on our switch. So we're going to wire the switch to the hot wire. And then we're going to wire the other side of the switch to the actuator. Now comes the uh, moment of truth. Let's plug it in, mount it up, see if it all works. See the actuator? All right, let's put it together. So here's our nightmare scenario. We're, we're stuck in the, uh, the element we can't get out, right? Reach over here and push the button. That's it. Pretty simple. Better than uh, shoestrings and whatnot hanging out. I do need to put out like a pole in here, I guess, so you can close it, right? That'll be another video. Like I said before, this thing is fairly adjustable. If you install it the way I showed you on my initial like test fit, I, I never moved it. Um, that was perfect. So you might want to just go with that, or you might want to come up with a much fancier way to mount it. I don't know. But these things are like five, ten bucks on eBay. I got two of them for twelve dollars. 